shown, this has been a day for upsets. It certainly has, Howard. This Cinderella story is about to come to a happy ending for this fiery duelist. Day. Oh, Mom. Oh, and someone just called about some tournament you've been accepted into. No way! <laughs> cool! Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Is that Knight? Knight? Who's Knight? Who's Knight? He's only one of the greatest duelists of all time. Wow! Think we can get his autograph? You can't just go up to the greatest duelist in the world and say, Excuse me, Mr. Knight, sir, can can I have your autograph? Huh. Sure. Thanks! Knight! Hello again, Rusty. Have you been practicing? Well... Every great duelist must practice. There are several formidable duelists around. Perhaps you should challenge one of them. I'll take on anyone! There should be some duelists hanging out at the mall or the restaurant. Maybe you should look there. I must be going now, but I'll check up on you later. So I bet you didn't expect Duel Masters to be open world, huh? I mean, open world might be a bit of an exaggeration, but we can talk to people and duel them, and we can do it in a non-linear fashion. So for example, we don't have to duel Timmy here. We could go to the map and travel to any of these friendly locations to duel other people. And we can look at our menu at any time to see our current quest. Which is Marcus is waiting for us at the restaurant, so we could just head straight there. But we're gonna duel Timmy instead. Alright, let's duel! So the early stage of a duel, as always, is just trying to get enough mana to actually summon anything, and Timmy has the advantage here because he has a monster that only takes one to summon, and he gets one of our shields early. These easy to summon monsters usually have a drawback though, like dying at the end of an attack. Timmy's deck tends to have a lot of weak and effectual monsters with weird gimmicks that die easily, but we could still easily lose to him of course if we don't have any defense, and I like to establish defense first of all. If there's anything particularly threatening about Timmy's deck, it's that, like all Darkness users, he has a ton of cards that are, that are made specifically to remove our monsters from the field without battle, which could remove a lot of our defense, but this early on in the game where you're not relying on one or two good defense cards, you can just fill up the entire, uh, the entire field and you'll be fine. So even though he got a few good hits in early, after we actually flooded the battlefield with monsters, he didn't stand a chance because his monsters are just so much worse than ours in every way. He was also really ineffective at adding mana, he only has a grand total of 4 for the whole fight, and he can summon a couple monsters because some of his monsters are relatively low cost, but it's absolutely nothing. So hey cool, it's time to pick our spoils for winning, and we're either going to pick a card that works well with our deck, or a card that we can sell or trade for high value. This is of course the strategy we are going to use when picking absolutely any card for anything ever, so I feel like... I feel like we've covered this game mechanic. I feel like we got it all down. So Timmy was a huge pushover, but he was also the first fight in the game, so I think that's to be expected. We're gonna head to the map screen now and go to the restaurant where Marcus is waiting for us. The game thinks we should know who Marcus is, but we don't. We'll find out shortly. In case you're wondering what the point to these optional fights is, it's just so you can get more cards and get your rank up, and the rank is really only for unlockables. So we can adjust the camera, and sometimes that makes our character spaz out. And I, I like to imagine how this might look to people watching us right now, because I imagine it can look very healthy. Bring it on! So 
So the hero of this duel is Braid Claw, a monster we can summon with one mana, and he has the drawback of always needing to attack every turn. But Lucy sucks so hard at establishing any defense, and I think she spends like the entire duel without a single monster on her field. So Braid Claw manages to take out a total of three shields. And by the time we're done with that, we already have two much more powerful monsters on the field, so she's just fucked anyway. I practice for 20 hours a day. So Quinn here has a distinction of having a lot of average monsters with average power, just like all of our average monsters with average power, which means we are for the most part evenly matched. He does have one distinct feature, and that is his ability to summon monsters which can be fused, or as the game calls it, evolved. Unfortunately for him, his evolved creature is only as strong as one of our normal blockers, so it is quite easily defeated, and this is a pattern that continues through the rest of the match where we smash our heads into each other and both of our monsters die. In the end, I'm fairly certain we only won because we had better and more frequently summoned blocker monsters, but we really were going blow for blow. We both were down to our last shield at the very end, so uh, he's an evenly matched opponent. Want a duel? Mandy has the same problem as Lucy, where she doesn't care enough about building up mana, so she spends the whole match with barely any monsters on her field, and by the time she starts caring, we have too much of a lead for her to fucking do anything. Usually the very first thing I do in a turn is sacrifice a monster for mana so I don't forget, but I guess the AI does not share my sentiment because this is twice now that this has happened. Hey Rusty, I hear you're quite the duelist. I'm the best. Not yet, but you could be. You'll need better cards though. Here, 
I have a gift for you. For me? I don't know. I... Great cards mean the difference between winning and losing. I tell you what, how about we duel for it? So do you remember early in the video when I said that Darkness decks have a lot of cards that remove your monsters from, from the field without the need for battle? Well, Marcus is made of those. It seems like every time I destroyed a shield or had a decent defense up, he had either Deathsmoke or Terror Pit to remove one of my cards. Whether you win this fight depends entirely on your deck's ability to come back and Marcus's varying stupidity, because he was so busy destroying my cards that he forgot to summon any monsters, which worked Im immensely in my favor. But this could easily wind up being the first fight where you have to grind for cards. Fortunately, our deck layout was good enough that it wasn't the case for me. Yeah, that's it. After we win, he just says bye. But we get explosive fighter U Ukar. We get explosive fighter, and this is going to be our best friend for quite a while. But that's it for this video. We defeated Marcus, so we now have a completely new quest. And uh, this quest is to fight a man named Ice Cream, which certainly sounds interesting. I'm going to fiddle with the deck a bit to make room for our new card, and I'll see you next time.